he asked to speak with a manager and he says he didn't, that didn't happen either. He was only there a few hours before he demanded a refund of about $50, but was denied. Police were called and Paul was asked to leave. He ended up driving to Sinton to stay somewhere else. We have reached out to Motel 6 and we're waiting to hear back. Victoria police say they did respond to this incident, incident, but the officer determined it was a civil matter. Paul says the upsetting experience made him feel defeated and he still has not heard from Motel 6. Back to y'all. Darius, thank you. This brings us to your viewer poll this afternoon. Scan that QR code right there on your screen to vote. The question is, have you had a nightmare stay at a motel? Yes or no? We want to hear from you. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to participate. Don Brubaker and I will have what you and your neighbors are saying on 25 News Now at 6. Now at least six people are hurt in one in critical condition after a man attacked a crowd of people in Paris Wednesday. Authorities say it happened around 645 in the morning. The French interior minister says a group of off duty police officers shot the suspect several times. He's now in critical condition and undergoing treatment. The minister says the weapon used in the attack was made by the suspect. A motive is not yet known. A gas pipeline was struck at the Ineos nitrile plant on Highway 185 at FM 616. As a result, the southbound lanes were shut down. A spokesperson says the leak is isolated and repairs are underway. She says the all clear was issued just after 4.30 this afternoon. One of the incentives available to companies using the Port of Victoria is a tax abatement. The city and county of Victoria have established guidelines for reinvestment zones and granting tax abatements. The Port of Victoria says applicants must meet certain economic qualifications. Abatements are granted for up to eight years. Contact the Port Victoria for more information. All right, another nice day out there, but uh, maybe cooler weather, Trey? Exactly, yes, cooler air is just about here, believe it or not, coming up after midnight, the front of it coming on in. We were very warm today. Look at that, 77 degrees currently. This is a live view from the uh, Victoria College Emerging Technology Complex with sunny skies, southerly winds are 20 miles per hour. And coming up in the overnight, the winds turn around the north after midnight, then the cooler air rushes on in, giving us a little bit of chill in the air. How cool will it get? We'll take a look coming up in your full forecast. Back to you. Trey, thank you. CNN has obtained new video of an interview that the former police chief of the Uvalde School District, Pete Arredondo, gave to investigators. It was recorded the morning after a gunman murdered 21 students and teachers. I know there was probably victims in there. And with the shots I heard, I know it's probably somebody who's going to be deceased. Former Uvalde School Police Chief Pete Arredondo heard for the first time. Careful, Chief. Come on, come on. The day after the May 24th shooting, attempting to explain his actions. In new video obtained by CNN, Arredondo telling investigators he assumed students in the room with the shooter were already dead. So he chose to clear children from surrounding classrooms. There's nobody in there? No, not here. We now know he was wrong at least three victims were pulled out of the room alive, who later died from their injuries. My first thought is that we need to, we need to vacate. We haven't, been, we haven't contained, and I know this is horrible, and I know this is what our training tells us to do, but we haven't contained. There's probably gonna be some deceased in there, but we don't need any more from out here. So I called out and I said, get these kids out, okay, baby, whatever I told them, bust those windows, get them out. Stunning admissions while being questioned by the FBI and Texas Rangers. Throughout this deal, I was trying to get make communication with him. He's communicating. Can you hear me, sir? Arredondo explains he kept trying to talk to the shooter, and for the first time, we learned that he heard the gunman, alone in a room full of children, reloading his weapon. And still, he took no action that stopped the gunman. I'm certain I heard him reload. I, I heard something over the pin. You obviously well know what that sounds like. Uh, not with a pit, I'm sorry, with a, with a clip. I'm assuming he reloaded, but I know he did something with it. Uh, I did hear that at one time. I don't know if it, there was a second. Um, he never responded at all. Now considered one of the worst law enforcement failures in recent memory, Arredondo knew that criticism would come. We're going to get scrutinized. I'm expecting that. Uh, we're going to get scrutinized why we didn't go in there. Days later, Arredondo would be labeled the incident commander by the Texas State Police. 
They say he was the officer in charge and the man to blame for the deadly delay. Who is the incident commander, sir? The chief of police of the Consolidated Independent School District is the incident commander. Hey, it's his school. He's the chief of police. Okay. Arredondo, who presided over a six-person police force before he was terminated in August, declined to comment for this story. Through his lawyer, he has previously denied that he was ever in charge and said he never issued any orders. A CNN analysis of never-before-made public body camera footage and newly obtained phone calls reveal Arredondo repeatedly directed the officers around him not to enter the room with the gunman. This is at 11.40 a.m., just seven minutes after the shooting began. Hey. Hey, this is Arredondo. This is an emergency right now. I'm inside the building. I'm inside the building with this man. He has an AR-15. He shot a whole bunch of times. He is in one room. I need a lot of firepower, so I need this building surrounded. I need to surround it with as many AR-15s as possible. As more officers with body cameras responded to the scene, we can hear Arredondo start to talk to the shooter. Sir, this is Arredondo. District Police, can you please put your fire down? We don't want anyone else hurt, sir. Arredondo can be seen trying to open the door to an adjacent classroom while giving commands to other officers. We're going to clear out before we, before we do any breach. We're going to clear out these guys. And since I clear this room, I'm going to verify what's been vacated, guys, before we do any kind of breaching. Time's on our side right now. Time was not on his side, and it reflects a mindset that goes directly against active shooter training. The policy emphasizes speed for any officer to go immediately towards the sound of gunfire and stop the shooter. Arredondo last completed the training in December 2021, five months before the Uvalde massacre. At about 12, 12 p.m., a crucial transmission from the Uvalde dispatcher comes over the radios in the hallway, informing the officers that a child in the room with the gunman called 911 and says she's surrounded by victims. The dispatch blares with an earshot of Arredondo. He doesn't seem to hear it because he's talking, repeating instructions for officers not to enter. Hey guys, hold on. We're going to clear the building first, and then we'll attack people. But we're going to empty these, these classrooms first. Oh, all these are empty people. Uh, he's verifying right now. The officers actually turn down their radios so they can hear Arredondo give the order. Actually, right, so turn the radios down, please. It seems clear to the men on this side of the hallway Arredondo is in charge. No entry to the chief of police gives you permission there. And when a nearby officer suggests that a border patrol agent looks like they are about to go in. You ready for friendlies? No, no way. No Nobody entry. Arredondo said he assumed border patrol agents at the other end of the hallway would be the ones to make the breach, since they had rifles and he and his men only had pistols. Uh, so I know those are BP and I know those are probably Bortac. A uh, smart thing for us to do, obviously with a handgun, is we need to let these guys uh, make entry when that's, it's that time. I gotta go over here. But it wasn't just handguns. As body camera footage clearly shows, there were plenty of heavily armed officers on scene. Hey, some in the very first moments after the shooting began. Arredondo, for the first time, also explaining why he thought the door was locked, admitting he never tried to open it. I have it in my, my picture in my mind that I saw that. I saw that hammer in there. And usually when that's there, that's locked. Man, 90% of the time. 302 is okay. We now know investigators believe it was unlocked and there was no need to wait for a key. At the end of the interview, Arredondo says that rather than breaching the door, he even considered trying to shoot through the walls to kill the gunman. The thought crossed my mind to start shooting through that wall, which has been stupid, but you, you start thinking, there's already somebody deceased in there, uh, you want to start, but you know, obviously we, we don't ever train to shoot through walls, it's not something that, uh, it's not probably the smartest idea, but you know, you always question yourself. Shimon Procopez, CNN, Uvalde, Texas. All right, that was difficult to watch for a lot of us. The full interview with former Uvalde Chief Arredondo is on CrossroadsToday.com. It runs about one hour.
Congressman George Santos is facing calls to resign from New York Republican leaders. Santos was elected to represent New York's third congressional district in November. A host of complaints were filed against the freshman congressman after the New York Times reported last month his bio was partly fictional. Today, the Nassau County Republican chairman said Santos deceived voters. He urged the freshman congressman to resign immediately. There's no place in the Nassau County Republican Committee, nor should he serve in public service, nor as an elected official. He's not welcome here at Republican headquarters for meetings or at any of our events. As I said, he's disgraced the House of Representatives, and we do not consider him one of our Congress people. In a tweet this afternoon, Santos said he won't resign. It comes as huge speaker. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy answered no when asked about Santos serving on any of the A-list committees. House Republican leaders plan on meeting to figure out to deal how to deal with this embattled freshman. And now here are some of the top headlines you can read in this week's Port Lavaca Wave. The Calhoun County ISD administrators have presented a new math framework which came out of a Texas Education Association grant. Renovations are expected for the Port Lavaca Animal Shelter, including maintenance and a new enclosure. And law enforcement have made 12 arrests in the month of January. You can read these stories and more at theportlavacawave.com. Stay with us straight ahead on 25 News Now at 5. The new Republican chair of the House Oversight Committee is looking into the Biden family finances. Also ahead, flight departures have now resumed across the U.S. after FAA system outage. Our next speller is Harini Logan from San Antonio. Can I get the origin? Kerrville, Texas. And definition? A place where everything is better. Known for their made-in-store tortillas, picked-at-peak produce, everyday low prices, and helpful partners. H-E-B. Correct. We went to mass. They oh, you told me. <laughs> so Wait, this is a great, the great Bob story. Bob Iger. So our boss. Our, no, our boss's our boss. Our boss's boss. boss's boss. Say what you said in the chat. I said it is akin to seeing your teacher in the mall. <laughs> Next five, Rosie Perez plus the best me in 23. So I sat there and Mark goes, there's Bob. Go say hi. And I was like, no, mm -hmm. nobody move. <laughs> Walking in heels is no joke. Please, knees, don't knock on me now. Thursday, Sherry is live. Ah! Hell, you watch, Betty. Payback simple. We both had a thing for your mom. I was almost your dad. You still can be. Every day we help kids navigate the realities of the world and make healthy, lifelong choices. Kids learn about alcohol, tobacco, and drugs in lots of ways, often from friends and siblings. While kids may hear lots of harmful information, parents do play a huge role in helping them make the right decision. Talking to your child, sitting down to a family meal at night just to discuss how their day went, or encouraging extracurricular activities can make all the difference. Representative James Comer is asking the Treasury Department to provide bank activity reports for President Biden's son Hunter and brother James. He's also requesting the bank reports for several Biden family associates and their related companies. Comer also wants some executives, some Twitter executives to testify about Biden's influence over technology companies. In 2020, Twitter allegedly temporarily suppressed a story about Hunter Biden. Now on to continuing coverage with the classified documents discovered inside President Biden's private office space from his time as vice president. The president says he was surprised by the discovery. He says he doesn't know what those documents contain and he has not looked at them. President Joe Biden says he was surprised when his personal lawyers told him they found government records in November in the D.C. office at the Penn Biden Center for Diplomacy and Global Engagement, where he was an honorary professor. They've turned over the boxes to the archives and we're cooperating fully, cooperating fully 
with the review and which I hope will be finished soon. Republican lawmakers are demanding answers with the new GOP representative chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Turner, sending a letter to the director of national intelligence asking for a review and damage assessment. Clearly, we should take classified material sensitive, uh, seriously. That's why we classify it. Ten documents were found that covered topics including Ukraine, Iran, and the UK. The handling of classified material is a very serious issue for our nation, and we ought to take it seriously. But there ought to be equal treatment under the law. Some Republicans are also saying this matter is being dealt with differently than the raid of classified information at former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate to recover classified documents. This is Republican hypocrisy at its finest. When the former president had 320 documents found at his personal residence, they said that, quote, that will not be a priority. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Flight departures have now resumed across the U.S. after an outage this morning of the FAA's notice to air mission system. The FAA lifted the nationwide ground stop at 9 a.m. Eastern time. While the system is up and running, the situation isn't completely resolved. The outage created a huge mess in airports across America, which is still unfolding. FlightAware showed more than 4,000 flights to, from, and within the United States were delayed and nearly 700 were canceled. I just spoke with Buttigieg. They don't know what the cause is, but I was on the phone in about 10 minutes. I told them to report directly to me when they find out. Aircraft can still land safely, just not take off right now. We don't know what the cause of it is. They expect to be able to, in a couple hours, they'll have a good sense of the cause and, uh, and we'll respond at that time. So we'll why did your team go? We don't know. Okay, we'll find well, out. Well, well, the FAA is working to find out what caused the outage. You know, for months, respiratory viruses have had a grip on the U.S. First, RSV, then the flu. But as cases for those viruses are trending down, COVID-19 is once again showing signs of a winter surge. Now health experts are urging people to stay vigilant. In the U.S., flu season still in full swing. But as rates for this virus trend down, the number of COVID-19 cases is ticking up. This is a, a new emerging subvariant, and it has risen very quickly across the country. One in five Americans now live in a county the CDC considers to have a high community level of COVID-19, but only about 15% of those eligible for an updated booster have gotten it. And about 20% of people in the U.S. are completely unvaccinated against COVID-19. People who have gotten that updated bivalent booster all the evidence so far suggests that they're still protected against even this XBB15. That Omicron subvariant has quickly taken hold in the Northeast, and health experts are watching to see if it will spread to other parts of the country too. With at home rapid tests and cases not being reported, the exact COVID 19 burden on the U.S. is unclear. However, some data suggests viral levels in wastewater are increasing. Hospitalization numbers have now surpassed last summer's BA5 wave, and seniors are being hit particularly hard. But obviously, right now, COVID is the thing that is increasing that we need to pay most attention to. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center reports Victoria has a two-day blood supply. Type O blood is at a one-day supply. Platelet and O donors are needed. O negative blood is critical in trauma care and is one of the first to run low because of its high demand as it is the universal blood type. Platelets are needed since they only have a shelf life of five days and help cancer patients continue treatment. Here are some of the top headlines you can read in this week's Quero Record. Quero County officials are sworn in by taking their oath of office, and Zion Tristan Foley is declared as the first baby of 2023. Plus, Alpha Life Nutrition hosts a ribbon-cutting ceremony. You can read these stories and more at DeWittCountyToday.com. Absolutely beautiful day today. Warm temperatures, 82 degrees was, was the official high, low 64 degrees. These numbers will be changing in a pretty big way coming up in the next 12 hours or so. A little bit less than that, actually. We'll give the details coming up in your forecast.
eerie new details about the Idaho murder suspect. I do get a sense that this is a game to him. The game he believed he was winning. His interaction with law enforcement. Seems like he's answering questions that aren't asked. He's deflecting. What crime experts are saying about the DNA. The car is a rolling crime scene. You think he left that sheath on purpose? It could have just been a calling card. New Dr. Phil. At the Lex Holiday Sale, you get more. More savings, like up to 35% off throughout the store. Every living room, every dining room, every bedroom, up to 35% off. Plus an extra 10% off when you pay with cash. And get interest-free financing for up to 60 months. New is good. Up to 35% off store-wide is even better. The Holiday Sale. It's going on now through the Holiday Monday at Lax Furniture. Where will your new Chevy take you this year? Anywhere. Find new experiences. Find new roads. Well-qualified buyers get 2.99% financing on all 2022 Silverado 1500 pickups or get 2,500 total cash allowance on this Silverado with a 2.7 liter engine. Plus, current competitive owners get an additional 750 cash allowance. Weather in the crossroads can be disruptive like the Big Flood, Hurricane Harvey, and the Arctic Blast. Conditions can change in an instant, which is why we're committed to keeping you and your family safe. Warning you in advance with Weather Alert Days on air, online, and on our Crossroads Today mobile app. From Victoria to Cuero and Port Lavaca, the 25 News Now First Warn Storm Team helps you plan your day every day. And good Wednesday evening, everyone. Trade Mining here. Take a look at the weather headlines for the, for the rest of the evening and your day tomorrow. Fog likely tonight, starting along the coast, already is and working its way inland throughout the late night, early morning hours. So don't be surprised to see that. But not lasting too much longer after about 2 or 3 a.m. because the front will move through and push all the fog into the Gulf of Mexico and cool us down and dry us out again. It's a cool front expected early in the morning on Thursday, about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, about. Cooler temperatures and windy on Thursday, 30 mile per hour winds behind the front, definitely going to be blowing around here, bringing in the cooler, drier air, making it feel a little bit chillier than it actually will be. By 10 a.m., we're in the 60s. As watch the temperatures continue to drop by the time we get to 9 a.m. on your Thursday, only in the 50s, 59 degrees, and 60s for the daytime highs, of course. And Thursday at 7 p.m., we're well in the 70s, in the 50s, I should say. Nope, not 70s, 50s. And we're looking at lows coming up for your Friday morning, well into the 40s, low 40s at that, pretty much. And only the 50s or so, near 60 degrees, for your overnight low and high coming up for your Friday. And looking at the fog conditions along the coastal zones, we're needing to work their way inland as we speak right now. Probably one or two mile visibilities by the time we get to two or three o'clock. And notice what happens here. The front moves through the crossroads region, pushes all the fog out into the Gulf of Mexico, clears us out, gives us good 12 mile visibility is coming up by about 9 a.m. So the fog is kind of a short lived little kind of thing till about two or three a.m. in the crossroads region. So the winds throughout the day today and will continue to feed that moisture on in to the crossroads region coming up for the overnight tonight. Then the front makes its way through by 3 a.m. You notice the uh, winds turning around to the north here and bringing in a gusty winds behind the front. By 8 a.m. we'll have gusts of 30 to 35 miles per hour lasting through the majority of the day on your Thursday. Calming down a little bit on Friday, but the cool air will continue to work its way on in Give us a little bit of chill, not seeing any freezing temperatures or anything of that nature, but we're looking at definitely cooler temperatures and mostly sunny skies. I wish we'd get some rain. We still do need some rain, but not really happening anytime soon. So we're keeping the dry conditions in. And you see the front to the north. Here it is coming on through. And now about near Austin area, about right in there to about just to the west of San Antonio, head to the south and southeast. I just showed you on the chart there, making its way through in the early morning hours coming up for the overnight tonight. There it is specifically, pushing on through and giving us clear skies, gusty winds for your day tomorrow. And so, about time to grab your jackets and your uh, sweaters for your day tomorrow, especially. The rest of the evening, we're down in the 60s. And coming up in the overnight tonight, we'll have temperatures about 59 degrees for the low temperature. Areas of fog turning cooler as the night and the morning wears on and the gusty winds will be intensifying. 67 degrees, that's going to be the high for your day tomorrow. Nowhere near the 80 or 82 degrees we were he having here today in Victoria. 
Front moves through, keeps us on the chilly side-ish, coming up Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Rebounding again, back to near 80 degrees, coming up for Monday and Tuesday. Maybe the next storm system giving us some rainfall, finally, on Wednesday of next week. Let's take a look at this right here. This is your QR code. Get your smartphone, scan the code you see right there. They'll take you to a web page. You can download the Crossroads Today app and sign up for email alerts. News, weather, and sports at your fingertips. Very easy, convenient, and free of charge. James and Karina. Trey, thank you so much. Coming up next on 25 News Now at 5, we'll take a look at Wall Street. Plus, FTX lawyers say they've recovered $5 billion in assets. Stay up to date with what's happening in the Crossroads by downloading the Crossroads Today mobile app. You'll get instant alerts to your phone or tablet the minute breaking news or weather happens. Only the free Crossroads Today mobile app features weather updates for local sports. The Crossroads Today app gives you the ability to stream our daily newscasts when you're on the go and share pictures or tips straight to our newsroom and so much more. Brought to you locally by Prosperity Bank with 12 locations serving the Crossroads area. The Blue Bonnet Youth Ranch starts the 2023 Charity Concert Series with one of country music's greatest voices, Gene Watson. With a career that has spanned decades and multiple number one hits, Gene Watson performs live January 19th at the Leo J. Welder Center to benefit the Blue Bonnet Youth Ranch. Proudly presented by the Victoria Television Group. Taking a look at your stocks, the Dow up 211 points, the S&P up 40 points, and the Nasdaq up 152 points. Oil up $2.29, closing at $77.49 a barrel. Authorities overseeing the bankruptcy of FTX have recovered more than $5 billion in cash and other liquid assets. FTX lawyers submitted filings last month showing the company had and its affiliates had a total of $1.2 billion in cash. FTX co-founder Sam Bankman fried was charged with orchestrating what prosecutors call one of the biggest financial frauds in American history. Last week, he pleaded not guilty to eight federal counts of fraud and conspiracy. A record-setting loss for Elon Musk, citing data from Forbes. The organization shows Musk saw his fortune shrink by $182 billion since November 2021. Musk's shrink shrinking fortune was largely due to the steep slide of Tesla shares, which lost about 65% of their value during the company's worst year on record. The loss was enough to knock him down from the richest man in the world, a title now held by luxury goods magnate Bernard Arnault. All right, stay with us. We'll take one last look at your forecast. Plus, Albuquerque, Albuquerque police find a tiger cub inside a home while investigating a shooting Tuesday. One, two, three, family! Twelve parents invited us into their homes, all in search of today's best parenting style. We're putting each parenting technique to the test. I can't do it. Do you want me to do it? Yeah. This feels right. We're looking for the style you think is effective. I want to know why my house looks like a nuclear power plant explosion and your house looks like that. The Parent Test, new Thursday, 9, 8 central on ABC. And live from Victoria, it's Kevin Nealon. The BISD Education Foundation proudly presents Saturday Night Live alum Kevin Nealon live in Victoria, Saturday, February 11th. You have seen him in The Wedding Singer, Happy Gilmore, Anger Management, and so much more. Purchase your tickets today and come laugh the night away with comedian and actor Kevin Nealon at the Victoria Fine Arts Center. Suitable for audiences 14 and up, with proceeds going to grants for great ideas and the dual credit scholarships. Sponsored in part by the Victoria Television Group. 
A Bengal tiger cub found in a dog crate inside a mobile home. Officers were responding to gunshots near a convenience store when they heard gunfire from the mobile home. A suspect armed with a semi-automatic handgun was found. Officers took him into custody. Officers also say they saw a trail of blood leading into another trailer where they didn't find anyone inside, but they did find this tiger cub. The animal is safe and in custody of New Mexico Game and Fish. The investigation into the shooting is ongoing. A lot of questions there. Mm -hmm. Well, now let's go to the weather with First Warren Storm Team meteorologist Trey Mining. All right, and thank you so much. Looking at the temperatures today, we're in the 80s, not so tomorrow in the 60s for highs, lows in the 40s, low 40s at that coming up for Friday and Saturday morning. So, of course, you need your jacket on then and your sweater more than likely. And of course, warming back up by the first of the weekend, the next week, back under 80 degrees on Monday and Tuesday. No rain in the forecast until maybe on Wednesday. Get ready for the cool air. Back to you, James and Karina. Trey, thank you so much. Thank you for being with us. Remember, we're always on at Crossroads Today Plus. We hope to see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 6. World News Night with David Muir is up next.